do you celebrate then like not celebrate i don't know what should i say like i need to understand so your nation or some of you maybe do celebrate or some have like do you celebrate or do you just go with the flow or do you like i don't see pro- protests as such either like right well, there, there is there was there is. the uh, suppressed thanksgiving address uh, from my cousin frank james mm-hmm. who started the national day of mourning um, and the protests of thanksgiving in plymouth massachusetts okay uh, and that's happened annually since since that beginning so uh, where can i find this the, if i want to put the link on my website about when i'm talking to you like is there a link or did they did they uh, uh, film it or is there and like how can people learn about this or is there writing about it yes i mean i think it, it ends up being in the news sometimes okay. uh, obviously if you google okay. national day of mourning national day of mourning um, okay you you'll find I'll, some information find it. on it There's, um, you know, Roland James. Roland? Uh, Roland? Roland. Okay, Roland R-O-A- James. R-O-L-A-N-D, Roland James, okay. Who, he, that's Frank James's son. Okay. And is, uh, I think, one of the main organizers of the National Day of Mourning. Mm-hmm. And, you know, keeping that sort of tradition alive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've attended numerous uh protests mm-hmm. as hasn't you know pretty much most of the Wampanoag people who are involved in in the nation mm-hmm. and in in our uh, in our communities today mm-hmm. I think most folks have attended or participated or spoken mm-hmm. at, at that event over the years so and basically so, what, so you so don't want to is, celebrate basically so you are just taking off because you have to take off Yeah, I, I think ultimately everyone is going to give you a slightly different answer okay. to it. You know, some folks, I don't think any any Native folks that I know mm-hmm. celebrate Thanksgiving like the, way. the typical American does. You know, because inherently it just doesn't have the same warm, fuzzy feeling. You know, we, we're constantly reminded when we look around about all the lands that were forcibly removed from our society yeah. we look around at how well everyone has done off of indigenous knowledge mm-hmm. whether you're talking about the pharmaceutical companies uh-huh. or you're talking about the logging companies or the mineral harvesting companies mm-hmm. or you're talking about you know the the massive land grabs that turned certain farming families into these you know uh, huge landholders where you know, and a single English family took the entire land holdings of, of a whole Wampanoag community, mm. you know, so... Obviously, so they don't like, refer to that. Well, no, yeah, uh, why would they? Yeah. I mean, they, yeah. they did phenomenally well, and some of those same families today mm. have some of that land and, and have the money that they have, <laughs> you know, managed to leverage out of all the resources on that land and the sale of some of that land and not any of it goes back to supporting an entire nation of people that were dependent on it. So, mm-hmm. you know, when you look at a Wampanoag family that's struggling in an apartment building trying to make ends meet, meanwhile, someone is phenomenally wealthy mm-hmm. off of the land that should be in their family's holding. And it's it's a constant reminder of yeah. of how the balance has shifted and how you know a society that was generous and allowed a small group of people to live and have enjoy military protection and and knowledge and medicines and friendship and support uh how in just several generations they took the upper hand and and did not they were not reciprocal with that relationship and they were not balanced and and kind people mm. like the like the folks that greeted them mm. and allowed them to continue to live yeah on property that wasn't theirs and allowed them to eat 
or actually gave them food to eat and provided them with resources that they themselves didn't know how to come across or maintain. Mm. Um, yeah. I, I don't really, I don't think anyone could look at that history, you know, removing their bias or their personal opinion about race and supremacy. Mm. If you just look at individual people mm. as just equal humans, you could not look at that story and say that this was a kind and giving relationship where at the end you could feel good about the outcome. Mm. There's no one in their right mind who could say that that was the case. Mm. There are several million Mayflower descendants today and there are less than 6,000 known Wampanoag people today. Mm. I don't know how that works without genocide and imbalance and devious action and horrific war. Mm. So what do you... So, so I, go think, ahead, go ahead. I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of reasons like that that Wampanoag people can't really look at this holiday mm. as something positive and, and meaningful mm. when we can't expect to look around our own communities and our look around the the areas of our nation today and see anything that acknowledges our people and our continuance. There's very little here that feels like home in our only home on this earth. And that in and of itself would make celebrating Thanksgiving hard to hard to swallow. Mm. Hmm. Do you have some resources that you can share with us, with me, that people can learn from that are written by the natives or you have uh, put down some uh, stories just the way you talk to me today? Uh, there are there are some folks who are doing a bit of writing now. I, you know, I think establishing a relationship, mm -hmm. and having conversations with indigenous people, um, from various regions helps to not only teach you about maybe moments in history that that have a different perspective that have been removed from from the telling of that story, but also um, the layers of humanity mm -hmm. that you get from having a personal connection and interaction with with people not just facts and information, but an understanding of people's sense of humor, their gestures, their movements, yeah. the the sounds and the expressions that are linked to a very specific people and culture and history and, and uh, how the the people actually view things. Mm. Because it's it's not just understanding that yes, you know, people had this, this, this experience mm -hmm. and they exist here and mm -hmm. this is what they typically do now. Mm -hmm. But that sort of textbook understanding of people, but the actual right. the actual connection that establishes a reason for people to honor and respect yeah. another type of, of nation and community mm -hmm. and language and yeah. right the reason that we should be getting together and talking yeah. about things and sharing and 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 establishing relationships right because it's that's what changes how societies view um, the future that's i guess true. ultimately that's it's if you don't know a people, it's very easy to dismiss the need to allow them to still exist in this world. I agree. Right? Sorry, go ahead. You were saying something? Oh, I was just going to say it, it's very easy in this society, believe, 
Unfortunately, yeah. it's easy mm -hmm. to disregard whole groups of people, exactly. even though communication is so easily attainable now. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to disregard if you just have controls in place that keep certain people and perspectives out of the media, for instance. Uh, you know, point to any news anchors mm -hmm. on any national news channels that have an indigenous anchor mm. and deal with indigenous issues. Mm. Not one. Mm. I can't think of anyone. Mm. Where are the heroes, you know, for our people? Mm. The where are the the young native children where where can they look to see people who are acknowledged globally or nationally mm. that they want to try to achieve and surpass their achievements. I, it's hard. I mean, we all are forced to forge our own way mm. and, and find heroes or find a path mm. that would allow us to maybe have a chance to become some of those people. And yet, in my whole life, I have yet to see someone make it to that level. And that says a lot about the society we live in. Mm. We're still fighting for the right to not be demonized by sporting teams and, and horrific caricatures of a generalized native person yeah. making a fool of themselves as a mascot for the entertainment of the masses. And we can't say that offends us and expect anything to be done about it. Mm. We can't expect in this modern society that our women and children were, that they will be protected and safe as Native women are five times more likely to be brutalized mm. than any other people in this country. Oh. It's, it's hard to really get behind a Thanksgiving holiday or Native American Heritage Month, which is November, and still... And, and, and just feel good about that when you can't feel good about being who you are and feel protected as a citizen of the United States and feel good about what the state of affairs are for indigenous people on in this continent. It's just, it's hard. It's hard yep. for us, I think. As indigenous people, however, we do have our celebrations and our feasts and our gatherings. And those are far more frequent than, than just once, than a, once, year. A, once a year. Yeah, you know, yeah. we have our Thanksgivings mm -hmm. and our celebration and feast times, which go off the lunar cycle. Mm -hmm. So 12 to 13 of those gatherings per year. Mm 